Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a beauty style video. As you can tell from the title, we're comparing drugstore dupes to their high-end counterparts. And I'm basically just gonna be discussing with you the drugstore products that I think just below the high-end products out of the water in terms of their price, in terms of, you know, their quality. A lot of brands make a lot of dupes for high-end products when they see that the high-end products are performing very well or are popular because they know that there's going to be plenty of people who want to try it but just can't afford it. Like, who has $40 to just drop on a foundation, you know, like, when they see that everybody's talking about it? Not me. What we're going to do is I'm just going to show you, I think I have about 10 products, and I'm going to tell you what they're a dupe for and how they perform compared to the real product. Some of the high-end products I do have here just to show you like an in-person comparison. And some of the products I'm just gonna be telling you about because um, I have not gone out and bought them because the drugstore product is you know, already great. So why would I need to try the high-end? If that is interesting to you at all, please keep watching and do consider leaving a comment, liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. And I say we just jump right into it. So let's get started. Okay, so starting off kind of not funny, but like it's funny to me because I literally was just talking about this in my last video, if you watched my uh, current favorites video. However, I just think it's too good not to talk about it in this one. It's such a good product. It is the e.l.f. Halo Glow liquid filter. I raved about it in my last video, so you already know. I'm in the shade 2 Fair slash Light, and it's just, this is compared to the Charlotte Tilbury, um, I want to say they're the beauty, like, glow filter or something like that. It's some kind of, like, filter product, and some girls use it for foundation, others use it for primer. I'm personally like would only use it for primer because I like full coverage. However, it's very just, it just provides such a nice glow and it's so much cheaper than the Charlotte Tilbury one. The Charlotte Tilbury one, I genuinely think is like $45. And this is literally like 10, maybe if that. And then I just put some on the back of my hand so you can see it. It does look a little darker than my skin tone. However, once it's blended in, it just blends out to like a perfect just glowiness on my face. And it's just, I don't have to rebuy this often because there's so much in this container. It says it comes with 1.06 fluid ounces, but I would argue that it's maybe even more than that, like, because they fill the whole bottle, you know? And since it's a DOFA applicator, you can really just kind of like scrape the sides and get it if you really want to. But it comes with so much product. It's so easy to use. It's so user-friendly. All you have to do is take the DOFA and just like, I just like stripe it across my face and put it like a bunch of places. And then, like I said, in my last video, just blend it out with my fingertips, you're good to go. So would really recommend this, especially I know so many influencers have been talking about the Charlotte Tilbury one, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, this is going to be your best friend. It's such a good dupe for it. This next product is something that I found to be a good dupe for the I would say the Stila cream liquid eyeshadow things, I believe they come with like a little doe foot applicator and you just put it like all over your eye and it's just like some kind of eye pigment basically. So this one is a little bit different than that. I went a little bit outside of the box with this one, but I really like it. So I think it's, it could be complimentary and it comes with so many colors that I think it could do just as good a job as the Stila one. And this is the ColourPop color sticks and this is in the color warm up and this is from their metallic line they do have different lines within the color sticks and in my opinion kind of easier to use it's more user friendly because it's like a stick so you just literally can like if you've ever used crayons in your life which i'm sure all of us have you can literally just color in your eyelid like a coloring book and you're good to go and then you can drag it down to the lower lash line if you're feeling frisky and if you want to have that smoky look here is the color right there i'm sure you could tell and it's just so 
beaming and pretty. I personally like really sparkly like metallic stuff. So I usually will add a another color on top just to like boost the brightness of it and the metallicness of it. But this really is all you need. And then you could just take like a little brush and blend it into your, um, your crease a little bit so that it's not like choppy. But besides that, it lasts all day. It's a great base if you're gonna use another powder eyeshadow on top of it because this is a cream. And yeah, it's like a very creamy consistency and there's so much in here. Like, let me, let me extend this for you guys. Look at that. <laughs> okay, that looks kind of weird, but <laughs> it's literally so full. You get so much product for it compared to the tiny little Stila, like that almost look like tiny lip glosses, like mini lip glosses basically. And they hardly come with anything and they're at least double the price, if not triple. So ColourPop, it's gonna be your best friend. ColourPop actually has, they don't intentionally, like they don't usually intentionally copy other brands like some brands do, which we'll talk about. But the original products that they come out with, in my opinion, are so good that they can be compared to a lot of high-end products. And I just think if you're either a beginner or you just don't wanna spend the money on high-end makeup products and you're already like an Ulta or something, just go to the drugstore side and grab yourself some ColourPop products because I have, I'm pretty sure I've yet to like use a ColourPop products that I don't like. I think I've liked every single one. I just love ColourPop as a brand. Okay, so this next product is a cream. I wanna say a cream or liquid, but it's really not a liquid. It's cream blush. And this to me is a perfect dupe for the Rare Beauty cream blushes. So not the liquid ones that you like, you know, are iconic for like the girls dab them like on their cheeks right here and then they blend them out and they're like super pigmented. Not the same ones, but these are really popular. The Rare Beauty, just like cream. I don't know exactly what they're called, but they're the Rare Beauty cream blushes. And they come in like a little compact, a little golden like white compact. This is the dupe that I found for this. So this is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the color Coral Crush. And I actually have had this for a pretty long time. I'm not the best with throwing out my makeup after it expires because it works just the same for me, but do as I say, not as I do. Don't keep your makeup past the expiration date. It could cause a lot of problems, but this is what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, it's kind of like gnarly and dirty around it because I'm gross and I just got some stuff on it, but the color is the important part. So it's like a pinky, you know, a dark, pinky it's a corally color but it's more to me like a deep pink and this to me i have really loved it as you can tell by the dirtiness of it i just take a blush brush and you can use your fingers if you want that's just not how i like to apply cream blushes like this if the cream blushes come out in an applicator that i can just dab on my cheeks i will use that but this one is unique in the way that it kind of like comes in just like almost like a powder blush format so I will just take a blush brush and take this and like dot it onto my cheeks. And then I will use either a sponge or a different brush to blend it out. Typically a sponge, cause that will blend the cream better into the skin. But I've heard such good thing about the Rare Beauty blushes. And I think that this one is a really good contender for being against that one because it's way less money, obviously. They come in an assortment of colors and you can find this one pretty much anywhere. And like I said, I've had it for a few years, so I don't know if they've changed the formulation, but for me, this formula works really well. All right, so I have yet another glowy product. As you can tell, I just love, when you have dry skin, like I do, I just try to do everything I can. I don't really like the look of matte things on myself cause it'll just look really like kind of dry and flaky. So I always try to give like a natural kind of like glow from within kind of look. And okay, so, I know we've all seen the viral videos of the girls who, like the 10 year old girls who were going into uh, Sephora and like going to the drunk elephant section and like destroying everything and just absolutely ruining the Sephora workers' lives. Hello darkness, my old friend. I know we've all seen those. <laughs> so to branch off of that, there's a reason for me saying this. Drunk Elephant is known for their bronzing drops in terms of makeup. I know so many people use the Drunk Elephant bronzing drops kind of as almost like a primer, but it's not their primer. They use it kind of just like as a base to make their face look bronzier and glowier. I can't, 
I can't usually use products like that necessarily, like the Drunk Elephant Bronze Drops, as much as I would like to have a, a bronzy look. If I put bronze drops under my foundation, my face is gonna be, you know, 10 times darker than my hands, and I don't want that. I want to be the same color. I don't want it to look weird. So I personally have never used the Drunk Elephant Drops. I'm also not dropping that much money on them because they are so expensive, just like everything else Drunk Elephant sells. There's a reason that the girls were stealing the makeup and, you know, destroying the makeup instead of buying it. But this to me, it's kind of, again, a little outside of the box, but hear me out. So this is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion. And it says it's a natural glow enhancer, and I have mine in the color 901 Fair Glow. Now, this is the color that works best for me because I'm as white as a ghost. However, if you have a little color to you or you want to add a little color, maybe you get, I know, you know, if you get spray tans, you would probably want your face to match your body. So you could use a darker, um, like a base, a darker base for that. And these come in, I think, like four different colors, and this is the lightest one, obviously, and then they have, um, three darker ones so you could go for like a medium one or like a slightly darker one and you could really get that bronze look and this is um a luminizer so it's going to do the same thing that the drunk elephant drops do in terms of like giving that glow it is on the back of my hand and you can just see it's a very creamy texture it's kind of similar to the elf one i do prefer the elf one in terms of how it lasts on my skin i I will say that this one, I can, I feel like my makeup does go, it doesn't last quite as long. However, if you were looking for that, you know, glow that the bronze drops are giving everybody, I say that this is a great contender. If you're pale like me everywhere, then I would say just go for like the lighter color and you could still just get that natural glow underneath it. However, if you spray tan or if you are on the tanner side, you can use this instead of the bronze drops, and I think it'll do pretty much the same job. Okay, this next one is one that I actually do have the high-end version of to show you guys. So I'm sure if you know anything about makeup, you've probably heard of this product. It is one of the most iconic makeup products, I would dare say. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. So it's a foundation. And I have mine in the shade 1 and 1 Ivory Nude. And I have actually gone through, I think, two bottles of these. They're super expensive. However, I do really, really like the formula of this. I love how high coverage it is. And I just think it's so pretty. So I just kind of wait for it to go on sale and then I'll buy a new one. However, I would dare say, now hear me out. This is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Makeup. And I got the one for normal to dry skin. And I am in the color 130. Of course, have to have all of the dirtiness. Who would I be without it? This one comes in a pump form, whereas the other one comes in um, the Estee Lauder one you just can like pour. It's just like a glass bottle. It's obviously bougier because it costs way more. And it's Estee Lauder. However, this, okay, so I love this. It's super high coverage and I just really like the way it makes my skin look, but it can be a little drying for me personally because I have more dry skin. This one, if you love this foundation and you're more on the oily to normal side and it works perfectly for you, or if you you just know that you're on the oily to normal side and you like want to try this, I would really recommend getting this Revlon one. In my opinion, it has pretty decent coverage. I like the way it goes on. It lasts a pretty decent amount of time. And I mean, I've never tried it for 24 hours, but like it lasts at least... I don't know how long am I awake for. It lasts at least like 12 and it does have sunscreen in it. So if you are sensitive to that, I would not recommend it. However, my skin's pretty sensitive and I don't break out from this product. And although I did get the normal slash dry skin one, I would say if you are normal to oily slash combination skin, you should get the matte one. So they make this in a matte version and it'll say like matte up here and it obviously won't have like the normal to dry thing on there. And I think that would perform pretty much identically to this, especially because they both have similar coverage. And this one honestly is kind of easier to use in my opinion because it has a pump, which I'm impartial to. And I think that you don't 
sometimes when you have these products that you can just pour out, I tend to pour too much and I tend to waste some of it. And when you're already paying so much for foundation, you don't want to waste a drop, you know? So I would recommend at least trying this. And if you hate it, you can try the Estee Lauder one. But I'd say that this is a great contender for a possible dupe, especially if you get the matte one. All right, I've got another rare beauty dupe for you guys. The reason I did so many rare beauty dupes was because they are just like killing it in the makeup game right now. Everybody loves rare beauty and I'm going to be honest, I don't think I've tried like a single one of their products. Let me know if you guys want to see me testing rare beauty actually now that I think about it because I would love to try her products. They're not too expensive, like they're not like Estee Lauder prices, but they're not, they're definitely not like drugstore prices. So they're a little bit more on the expensive side. I have just heard such good things about them, but everything in the makeup community is ebb and flows. You know what I'm saying? So like a few years ago, everybody was obsessed with like glossy air and like the, you know, the boy brow and the cloud paint and all of like that really clean girl makeup. And I honestly haven't really heard much about it since then. And now the new thing, in my opinion, has been like the Rare Beauty, the like, just the cream blushes that she came out with. A bunch of her products have just been going absolutely viral, especially on TikTok. So I thought that that would be the thing that people would most like to do. So most of us are familiar with her um, cream blush where you take a little bit and then you dot it and it's so freaking pigmented. Here's why that's kind of a hit or miss for me. So it's... A hit, obviously, because I want things to have pigment and I want things to show up on my skin. Like, why else would I put it on my face? However, if it's too pigmented, I have a really big tendency to just go overboard and just send it. So if I have the option to dot it and it's just gonna be super like pinked, pinked out, you know, like a pink brick on my cheek, that's the look we're going for that day, you know? Like, I'm just like, I'm not gonna, what am I gonna do, take off all my makeup and start over? Like, no, I literally, if I'm given the option, I will go overboard. So it's, sometimes it's not the best of a super pigmented product, but since I have heard so many warnings about that, I would probably be more careful when doing it, but sometimes, you know, we gotta go all in. So this is the dupe that I found for that Rare Beauty blush. And this is actually from a brand that I had never really heard of before. This is from Profusion Cosmetics and it's in Blush Hour. And if you're looking at it, you could tell that it's really similar to the She Glam blushes and uh, bronzers and stuff like that. And I think that they were kind of trying to copy it a little bit with the packaging. It's not the exact same, but it's pretty similar. It's like a plasticky, it's made to look like glass, but it's like a plasticky packaging right here. And this is in the color Rose. And it has that same applicator type where it's like a sponge on the end and then the product is like inside and you can like squeeze it to get some. The one thing I don't love about this packaging is that I think I miss out on a lot of the products down here because it only is like grabbing it from this top section. However, I'll show you what the color looks like. And obviously it's a cream slash liquid blush, so it's very similar to the Rare Beauty one. And that's what it looks like not blended out. So it's a really pretty color. It's definitely nowhere near as pigmented as the Rare Beauty one, but for reasons I just told you, I kind of dig that because I think it's a lot easier to just, you know, and it has that special applicator that you can literally just make like the three dots and then just blend it out. And then you're good to go on blush. I like to put some on my nose too. <laughs> but in my opinion, it's just easier to work with when it's not as pigmented and it still is a liquid blush. So you would still put it on before your powders and it has a really pretty color. So to me, this is a great contender to be one that you pick up instead of the Rare Beauty one. Okay, the next item is probably one of the most iconic drugstore items, I would argue. It definitely had its time in the sun where everybody loved it and I never really stopped loving it, but I know I'm sure a lot of people didn't. It's just not as talked about anymore because it did come out a few years ago, but you know, they're always remaking it. It's a really good product, so I can see why it was so popular. But this, in my opinion, is, and this is gonna be like a little bit of a, if you know, you know kind of thing. It's, in my opinion, very similar to the formula of the Becca bronzers and the Becca contour powders, you know? Now, I know that might be a sensitive subject for some of us because Becca's 
you know, six feet under, like Becca's been done. However, we can still find things that were similar to the brand while it was around. I still have some Becca products. I don't think I have any of the bronzers, but I do have some of the highlighters and I still really like those. That was what they were known for, obviously. But this is such a good bronzer. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the color light bronzer. And um, if you've watched any makeup videos, especially from like, I wanna say like 2017, 2018, this was all the rage. And as you can see, it has been very, very well loved. I hit pan on this and I'm still trying to get like the rest of it out. And for me, this bronzer color is perfect. It's, as you can tell, I'm very pale. So it just is the perfect like transition color for my cheeks without it being too dark because as we've stated, if, I, if it's too dark, I can go overboard and just have like a, like a line on my face. So this one is really buildable and it's a really like kind of subtle color, but not so subtle that it's like disappearing on my cheeks. I really recommend this and it does go on like butter, blends like butter in my opinion. It's so good. And one of the things that people really love about it is the smell. It basically smells like tropical coconut, like a beachy scent. I really dig the smell. Um, I know some people really hate when pro products are fragranced. The only products I'm not crazy about being fragranced are my foundations. Like, you know, like, I, I don't know if you guys have tried like the Wet n Wild, but like that, that foundation has like a paint thinner smell. And that one I'm not crazy about because then I smell it all day and it kind of gives me a headache. But like the rest of, you know, like cheek products, eye products, I know that like Too Faced has all of their like chocolate palettes and then they have like the peach one that smells and then they have the chocolate Soleil bronzer. All of those smell and I love using all of those and I like to smell those. I think it could be really fun. Same with this one. I think it's I think it's fun in moderation. I wouldn't want every makeup product I use to be as heavily scented as those things. For the purpose of this bronzer, it just really gives the effect of like, oh yeah, I just got back from Hawaii. You know, but like not like a, I don't know if there's a way to say that without sounding like pretentious, but like if there is, it would be this bronzer. <laughs> okay, I saved the best for last. These are the last two products that I have, or four technically, because I do have the high-end versions of these and I wanted to compare them for you guys. And I think that these are the closest dupes in my opinion. Like there's no stretching of the mind. These are pretty much the exact same thing. It's just one is cheaper than the other basically. <laughs> Hello? Okay. The lid just flew off the high-end version, if that's any <laughs> indication. So the high-end brow products that we are going to be copying is the Queen of Brows herself, the most popular, I would argue, brand for brows, which is Anastasia. This is the Brow Definer in the color Chocolate. And the one that I am saying is very similar to it is actually the LA Girl. This is the Brow Bestie, and I have this one in the color Deep Brown. Now, first of all, they are very similar. They're one, the exact same like measurement sizes. Actually, the if you look closely right here, the LA Girl one's actually a little bit bigger for the price. And Anastasia's products have always kind of rubbed me the wrong way in terms of like how highly they're priced. Cause I'm like, I get wanting like good brows, trust me. But like, I'm not spending $40 on a pencil that's gonna last me two weeks and I'm gonna have to replace. Like, that's just ridiculous, you know? So here is the Anastasia one. I'm gonna kind of like heavily put it on to show you guys like the color and the consistency. And I'm not gonna lie, the An Anastasia Definer is a really good product. It has, I don't, I never really liked the Brow Wiz because my brows are naturally on the thicker side and there's a lot of hair there already. So all I really need to do is like fill in a couple of spots max and then I'm good. So I never really needed like the tiny little Brow Wiz because I'm not going in and drawing individual hairs. Like I've already got hairs, I don't need more. So this, applicator is like the thicker one and it's more angled. I know this one came out, so the Brow Wiz was like super iconic. And then this one came out like a couple years after, I believe. And then everybody, you know, fell in love with that one. And as you can see from the LA Girl, this one has pretty much the exact same applicator. 
and I will swatch this one for you guys right underneath. As you can see, they are virtually the exact same color. The Anastasium one might be a little softer, but if anything, that's kind of like more inconvenient for me because then I have to go in with more product, which is wasting more product, which is money down the drain. So. I do regularly use both of these just because I have both of them, but if I were to run out of the Anastasia one, I don't think I would repurchase it unless it was like on sale. I would definitely repurchase the LA Girl one because it's basically the same product. You actually get more product. It's a little bit darker, so like by hair, it's a little bit darker. <laughs> get it? Hair. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! It just works the exact same and it's basically the exact same product and I don't feel like spending an additional $30 on the exact same product, you know? All right, so this last one is liner and I'm very passionate about my liner, especially my liquid liners because I do wings very often. So the one that we're going to be copying is the iconic KVD tattoo liner in the color Trooper Black. So it's this one and I'm a little... This is off topic, but I'm a little confused what KVD stands for now, because it's not Kat Von D anymore, because she's gone. Not gone, like she, she didn't die, but like she's like, I, I don't know where she is, she's somewhere, but she's not, she's not making products for Kat Von D anymore. I just, sometimes I wonder what it stands for, because I know that they use KVD now, but I, every time I say it, I'm just confused as to what the actual company's like full name is now, instead of just initials. <sighs> I guess it's not important, but this is a very kind of like, thin angled black pure black liner liquid liner and i love that just felt tip pen that is my favorite like form of liner it's just so easy to use i usually will do some eyeshadow first so i'll do like the wings in eyeshadow just to kind of trace them out and make them as big as i want and it'll just be like kind of subtle and smoky and then i'll go in with a like a liquid liner afterwards and just like perfect it and I'm good to go. The one in my opinion that's the closest is the NYX liner and this is just in the color black. This is what it looks like. And um, they're both waterproof, which I don't really have any jurisdiction to talk about if things are waterproof or not. They probably are. I use, you know, a cleansing balm to take off my makeup at night. So I wouldn't really know because that's supposed to get off waterproof products. So I wouldn't really know if they're waterproof, but I'm sure they are. I mean, I've been in the rain before and they haven't left my face if that's, if that's anything. And this, I just realized I didn't show you the tip. This has a very similar tip. Now I will say you can see that this one has like the little hairs kind of coming off. Um, so that's something to look at if that's going to bother you. However, if you go from the other side and you don't use the side that has the feathering on it, it will make absolutely no difference to you. I guarantee you. So this one is a little bit, I guess, you know, higher quality, which makes sense because it's a higher end product. However, in my opinion, they're so similar. They're, they're both so pigmented and they just make such a like, I like when the line is, I don't like too thin of an eyeliner because then it's gonna take me forever to draw my wing because I like my wings kind of like on the chunkier side but it's just the perfect size to be able to like if you give it more pressure you'll get more product and it'll be bigger and if you give it less pressure you can have that dainty little wing if you want and as you can see this is actually kind of similar to the Anastasio so these are the eyeliners right here the top is KVD the bottom is NYX and if you can see the top is actually the one that's a little bit more faded and it's not as pigmented as the bottom one. So this is another case of like, I think that the NYX one honestly would be the best bang for your buck. Like you just, if you're gonna buy a black liquid liner and this one, I've had them both just for reference for the same amount of time as well. So it's not like, oh, well you had the KVD one for so long. That's why it's more dried out. I've had them for the same amount of time and I, I use them still both regularly. However, the NYX one is just easier to work with. It just gets my wings on quicker. It gets them on because they're it's automatically blacker. So I don't need to go in with 
the KVD one and layer some more multiple times versus being able to use the NYX one where I can just go over it, you know, once and then just fill it in really quickly. It's super smooth. Both of them are pretty smooth. I'm not like mad at either of the applicators, but you will see that the NYX one is a little like ever so slightly a little bit chunkier of a line. So the NYX, which is perfect for me, which is why I favor it, but because I like my wings, like we said, a little chunkier, a little chunky monkey. So if I was to buy a black liquid liner, it would definitely be the NYX one. I think they do a great job with it. I don't know if they were necessarily even trying. I mean, there's only so much you could do originally with a black liquid liner. It's been done, like there's, you can't really be that unique with it. You know, like you could try to make the packaging a little bit better, but it's gonna be pretty much the same product. But in my opinion, the NYX one is just better unless you, if you're somebody who really likes like light wings, like, you know, you're just like doing a little bit of liner at the end, you want your lines to be pretty thin, like you're going for more of like that natural look, can't relate. And you would probably prefer this one then because it's a little bit faded and it's a little like not in a bad way. It's just like it's it's more of a subtle black, I guess, you know, like I would say. So if we're looking at it from like a mascara point of view, the NYX one would be like blackest black. And I think the Kat Von D one would be like soft black, you know? I don't know if that resonates with anybody, but for me, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that is all of the products that I have to share with you guys today. I hope that you got some motivation to try maybe some new drugstore products. I'm always trying new drugstore products because they're so much more easily accessible than high-end products, at least for me, because you can just get them literally at like the grocery store. Or if you're at Ulta, you can just go to the drugstore section. I will say I didn't have like every type of product on here because um, this was more about showing you compared to a high-end product, what would be a good alternative, a cheaper alternative to the high-end ones. However, if you do want like a dedicated video to just like my favorite drugstore makeup products, just in general, regardless of like if they're close to anything else, I could definitely do a dedicated video to that because there are so many good drugstore products. And as I stated in my monthly favorites, I really do think that total in all of my makeup, I do think that I actually have more drugstore products than high end. And there's nothing more disappointing because if you get a drugstore product and it doesn't work the best, at least you can rationalize it and be like, well, it wasn't that much, you know, I didn't have like super high expectations. But when you get a high end product and it doesn't work very well, it's like, ugh, like a knife in the heart. Like it's like, I just spent, you know, $50 on this foundation and you're telling me it like makes my skin look like shit. That sucks. So I would definitely say that drugstore is a little bit easier to like test regularly. So just let me know what you want to see next. If you want me to try any more drugstore products, I definitely think I have a lot already. I mean, there's so there's so much makeup out in the world, right? Nobody could ever try it all. So there's definitely products I haven't tried yet and I would be willing to try. So let me know what you guys want to see and let me know what you thought of this video today. Comment down below if you have any recommendations of dupes for products. I would love to hear your recommendations. I'm sure others would too. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and if they work, if they don't work. Obviously, some makeup products work for some people and some don't. So everybody's skin is different. Everybody's different uh, in the way that they like their makeup to look. So anyways, with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. And I appreciate all your guys' support. And yeah, bye.